education? Why were you teaching at night at Golden Gate University? Well, <clears throat> I've always been uh, showbiz oriented, and being a school teacher is like being in showbiz. You're uh, <laughs> very much in charge, and you're on stage, and it's an opportunity uh, to share the knowledge that you have with other people. And so it's, um, it's a helping uh, profession, and I was uh, drawn to that, certainly more than uh, being a chemical engineer. Right. And so how did the, what was the state of the education services when you arrived, and how did it evolve? Well, uh, Colonel Walsh felt that the education uh, officer at the base was really not doing a good job, and so I guess he was really so pleased with the fact that uh, I was so interested in uh, helping him that he felt that that might transfer to the people for whom he was responsible at the old army base, the military people. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he wanted me to have that job. And as it turned out, uh, it worked out very, very well. Uh, I was very conscientious and dedicated to make sure that every enlisted person who did not have a high school diploma was enrolled in our on-post uh, GED classes so that every enlisted person who did not have a high school diploma would not leave Oakland Army Base without uh, having the uh, GED equivalency. Was this a requirement or was this something that you just took it? No, it was not. Uh, it was an encouragement, okay. but uh, with the backing of Colonel Walsh, we made it at Oakland Army Base an absolute requirement. So would you get a list of the people who did not have high school Yes, diplomas? yes, and, and then they would uh, uh, send the people to me, I would counsel them, and it was a 100% enrollment. Oh, wow. So this seems like a pretty unusual um, setup to have. Were there other army bases? I don't know of any other army base that did that. It just seemed like a good idea, and since I had the full support of the command, I was able to pull it off. Mm. And so were the teachers who taught um, on base, did they also teach at the Oakland High School, or mm -hmm. were they dedicated? Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. They were part of the faculty at um, Oakland Tech High School. Okay. And now the GED exam, it's pretty rigorous. This is fairly difficult. Well, I think for someone who has passed uh, the, the GED test, it certainly shows that they have a body of knowledge that you're not really sure whether that someone who graduated from high school has that body of knowledge. Uh, there are five uh, subjects that they have to pass. The most rigorous, of course, are math and English. And um, for someone to be able to pass those uh, tests shows that they do have a good uh, grasp of that information. And I think someone who has graduated with a GED possibly might have a better education than someone who uh, didn't do a very good job in being passed along mm -hmm. in some high school program. Mm -hmm. And also, since this program was being run really by the Oakland Unified School District, the diploma was given by the Oakland Unified School District, not by the Oakland Army Base. So these people had an actual diploma from uh, Oakland Technical High School. Mm -hmm which was something that uh, I don't, to my knowledge, no other Army base had a program in which the graduates uh, of the GED program had such credentials. Right. After we got the uh, uh, people who didn't have a high school diploma, their, their requirement met. Then, of course, there were all of these enlisted people, uh, men and women on Oakland Army base, who did have a high school diploma, mm -hmm. who needed to have a baccalaureate degree. Mm -hmm. And so the next step was to take care of these people. So I found a uh, college in Columbia, Missouri, Columbia College, who gave off-campus programs on military bases. And they were very generous in awarding credit for military experience and for awarding credit for passing the uh, USAFI and, of course, tests. And so uh, I contracted with this college to put uh, their program on Oakland Army Base. And also I got the guy who did my job at Treasure Island to do the same there. So we had quite a population between Oakland Army Base enlisted people and Treasure Island enlisted people uh, for participating in this 
program in which uh, the only degree that was offered was a baccalaureate degree in business administration. And so we offered courses that would lead uh, toward that degree. Okay. And the, if a student at uh, Treasure Island or at Okinawa Base were on board for three years, if they went to school three nights a week, and if they had attended military schools that uh, the Columbia College would award credit for, and if they could pass the end of course tests, in the three years that they were in the military on those bases, they could leave with an undergraduate degree in business administration. So would you say it was part of the culture of base life? Well, it became the culture of that base life. Yeah. Almost, the general said to me one day, he said, Jimmy said, I can't get anything done because all my military people are in school. <laughs> and I thought well, that really isn't true because they're all doing it in their own time except for the GED people. And I really appreciate your letting them have time off during the day for that program. But the people that are in school are on their own time and they are dedicated in doing this uh, after they are no longer working for you. So it sounds like this program was probably pretty transformative for people. Uh, well, it was. Um, and then not only did we have those programs going, but we had uh, the, the craft shop uh, was putting on classes. And I thought, my goodness, why can't we get um, uh, the Oakland uh, Junior College? Uh, we got, uh, there was Merritt and Laney in Oakland, and then there was a Vista College, which was their off-campus uh, program. And so I contacted Vista College, and they agreed to use our facility for the craft shop. And um, I guess that was pretty much it, the craft shop. Um, instead of our having to hire teachers to teach classes at the craft shop, since we had that wonderful facility, then Vista College took advantage of our facility and provided the teachers mm. to uh, put on the classes in the craft shop. We had uh, upholstery, woodworking, pottery, ceramics, and jewelry. And we had the, this wonderful facility, but it required the consent of the general, once again, to allow these civilians, uh, outsiders, to come into the base. Mm. But with the urging of uh, Colonel Walsh, that was a snap and a done deal. And so once again, we got good publicity. This uh, military base uh, cooperating with the uh, uh, commun community colleges, of uh, uh, Vista College, to put on these uh, uh, programs. And so once again, I didn't have to pay the teachers. It was paid for by the... Uh, Vista College, and not only that, the people who were taking these classes got college credit. And not only that, I was able to get the people who worked in the craft shop to take annual leave during the time that these classes were run, and they became members of the faculty of Vista, and so they were working during their daytime job, took annual leave at night, and were hired by Vista College to teach the classes that they would normally be teaching anyway, but they were getting paid for it by the community college, and they were uh, being able to award a college credit to the people who were taking the classes. So that was another win-win situation. Yeah. The people at the Oakland Army Base were very nice to me, uh, and I had two people particularly, I think, that helped me a lot. James Johnson was a training officer. He lived in San Francisco, and um, he encouraged me to go back to school, and so um, I, it was difficult because of the children, but he insisted. So I, they had a Columbia College was being offered courses at Oakland Army Base at night for civilian and military. And so I was one of the civilians who attended, and I received my BA degree in business administration. Columbia College was not free. The government paid for me to go. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Did very many of your fellow workers take advantage of that opportunity to go to Columbia College? No. Mm -hmm. I, I had one classmate, um, uh, David, David Grant. He and I completed. Mm -hmm. The rest of them were, uh, that I remember, were military people. I also took advantage of several courses that were offered at the Army base. Mm -hmm. I learned to do upholstery. I did all my furniture. Wow. And, uh, and I did furniture refinishing. I learned at the Army base. I remember a time management class mm -hmm. I was. And there were several other classes. Oh, engraving. I learned to engrave because I was doing awards. That was one of my jobs. Uh, and I had to do the plaques. Mm -hmm. had to engrave the names on the plaques. I learned that, too, at the Oakland Army Base. I don't I'm sure that everything we do in our lives affect where we go next. Mm -hmm. Like they say, the, um, the universe is always working in our favor. <laughs> right. And so um, it, it was really weird how I ended up at the Army, because well, I didn't have any intention of working for the Army. Mm -hmm. But I had just finished, um, I was a single parent, mm -hmm. desperately trying to get my first AA degree in transportation, because the Port of Oakland actually provided that for us for free. No. So I was looking Give for... Give a little background there. What do you mean the Port of Oakland? Um, the Port of Oakland were desperate for transportation um, sa savvy individuals, mm -hmm. whether they be male or female. There was a huge shortage. And so they provided um, the 30 units that you needed for a degree in logistics, transportation I logistics, see. for free. At what school? You would have to go to the Port of Oakland. They had some of the classes there. And then they also, at Oakland Army Base, they, uh, Port of Oakland and Oakland Army Base worked together, and a lot of the classrooms were in the classrooms located directly on Oakland Army Base, because oh. there was actually a school there mm -hmm. with several classrooms. Mm -hmm. It was two stories, actually. Was it overseen by an established college, the, the local junior? Um, yeah, Alameda, you actually got your, um, your degree from the, uh, the Alameda Junior College. And I started working for the Navy mm -hmm. because um, I, I thought, okay, well, I'll just... I'll start working for the, well, what happened was, what really happened was, right after I got my degree, was simultaneous with the deregulation of transportation. And all the companies I thought that I was going to be able to work for, like Yellow and all these other companies, mm -hmm. you know, System 99 and stuff, and they all went out of business. And so now, I thought, now they, what do I do? Why would that have put them out of business? Because deregula deregulation actually um, threw away all the tariffs. And so people were competitive now. They were competing against one another, and they couldn't maintain um, their businesses, so they were just dropping like flies. Mm -hmm. Trucking companies were going out of business. Truckers were having to give up their, their um, trucks. It was a really a nightmare for um, the trucking industry for the small guy. The big guy seemed to just do okay. You know, but it was just, a, it was really kind of sad for mm -hmm. a lot of these companies. And so, so then I go, okay, well, now I got this degree, and now what do I do? So somebody said, you should go work for um, Military Traffic Management Command. And I thought, okay, well, I'll go over there and check it out. But there wasn't, but they, they weren't going to hire me. And so I said, okay, well, I'll just go work for the Navy or over on the other side in Alameda and then wait and see what would happen, right? So I got a job as a secretary, even though I, you know, I had this education, but I got my foot in the door. As my, that was my first federal job. And so I worked there for about six months, and the commander over there said, um, why are you here? You need to be over at Oakland Army Base. And I go, yeah, I know, but they won't hire me. So he wrote a special letter, and back then the jobs were pretty plentiful at Oakland Army Base. And I'm a single mom trying to, you know, put food on the table for my kids because I wasn't getting child support. So mm -hmm. I'm a desperate woman here trying to get my career going. And so he goes, just go, he goes, Let, let's see what we can do. So he wrote a letter and I got my first job in transportation as a shipment clerk, GS-5. I started as a GS-4 secretary in the Navy and then went over there as a GS-5. And then um, just started working my way up um, very quickly. In fact, my resume would show I would be working for six months in one job, six weeks in another job. As soon as I got a job, I would start looking for my next, my next mm -hmm. potential, 
you know, that was going to keep pushing me up. And um, I, I was able to get to GS-12 um, within eight years from GS-4. So that, that's probably That's a desperate the woman. That's yeah, a desperate right. woman. <laughs> And we're talking to you today about your long service and, and the chief service at the Oakland Army Base. Could you tell me when you started there? I started November 11th, 1968. My name was Rose Johnson at the time. I was married and I had a little baby that was like 11 weeks old. And when I started, uh, I was only supposed to work for a few months. It was just going to be temporary. How had and, you found the job? Um, my father-in-law had been in the military and he had, uh, he had uh, gone through the Oakland Army Base and when I moved up here from San Diego in 1968, I told him, I think I need to find a job for a couple months and he says, why don't you go to the Army Base? And I said, I don't even know where it is. And uh, that's how I landed over there and I applied for a temporary job. Uh huh. And that became a job. What was your first job? My first job, I was a, let me see what did I say here, I was a clerk typist. GS4. I worked in documentation division and my supervisor was Ms. Maki Nakaji. And um, maybe what we could do is do an overview of how you progressed. Okay. You started as a GS4 and you ended up? It's a GS12. And that and was in? Uh, 1996 mm -hmm. after working 28. I ended up working 28 years at the Oakland Army Base. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, I started in documentation division and I had come from uh, working in the VA hospital. And so when I started working with cargo, it was very dry and my boss, Maki Nakaji, said, you don't seem very enthused. And I said, well, you know, when you work in research with doctors and then you come here and you move cargo, it doesn't sound exciting. And so she said, well, I'm gonna make it exciting. And so the first thing she did was she um, arranged a tour for all the new employees at the Army base and we boarded one of the ships, and I, I, somewhere I have a picture of that. Um, and we, they showed us how things are loaded. We watched the ship be loaded. And then she explained the importance of you know, providing our military with everything that they need to survive overseas. And so over the years, I, I, it, it became very exciting. Would you say that the Army base really did afford a certain kind of mobility for other people as well? You, you certainly yes. were able to. Uh... It, 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 it gave you a. a a comfortable living. You could. I, I raised my children while I worked there, and a lot of other families did too. Um, the, working for the federal government, uh, I had a lot of times. I had people say to me, "Why don't you come and work over here? We'll pay you more." Uh, and it's true. We did not get paid as much as uh, people on the outside would get paid for the same job, but we were federal service. And in fact, when I was working in, in procurement. Some of the ladies from purchasing went to work for uh, outside uh, companies, and they would call us and tell us, oh, I'm making $10 more than you are, or whatever. And it was true. We never got what the private industry got. But um, I don't know. It was kind of like I stayed because it was my job. I enjoyed it, and I, I got personal gratification from knowing that I'm helping the troops. Well, you also get an education. Let's, so I let's did. talk about that. When did, when did that start? Okay, in 1983, um, I applied for a position in the old contracting section again. It was, in those days, it changed from procurement to acquisition. And my boss again was Mr. Kang, James C. Kang. And I, uh, there was a program called the Upward Mobility Position Program where you could apply for these jobs and you didn't have to have a college degree and and you go up to a certain level uh, if you went to the different schools that they sent you so that's what I applied for that's what I got and my first this was through the military through, or the, through, army. The, through yes, the army yes through the army I managed to um, take quite a few classes I, I took contract law class um, in other words I took all the classes that I needed to be able to move up and become a contracting officer and get a warrant. So, and that's a, that was a big deal in those days because we didn't have a lot of women who were contracting officers. And you are given a certificate? You're given a certificate of and, completion. And you advance in the... And that way you, you're able to advance, right. Um, 
that that's that's how I got to where I was. I actually achieved more than I thought I ever would uh, with my education, my little education that I had when I started working. I don't think you can do that anymore. But in those days, you could start just, I, I came right out of high school and started working, and so I did pretty well. And so what did that lead to in terms of your work on the uh, base? Uh, I ended up being a contracting officer with a warrant for up to $5 million, which means that when the government, uh, there are only certain people that can spend money for the government, and they're called contracting officers. And to be a contracting officer, you have to have a certain amount of experience and classes, certain classes. Uh, they also give you a warrant, which is your permission to spend government money and sign contracts uh, up to a certain monetary level. And then someone with a higher position will get a, a higher level. Uh, well, mine was $5 million, so that was good. 